Okay, we're going to be looking at the game Napoleon at Waterloo, and it was designed by Jim Dunnigan, who was the president of SPI at that time. And it was actually given out as a free game for all uh, people who subscribe to S&T Magazine. I remember getting my uh, game in a uh, very plain brown envelope. And it was a very plain looking game, and it was meant to be an introductory game to the world gaming hobby. So what did it look like? Well, when you got it, so the, the map was very plain. Uh, I'm going to call it black and white, but it was actually sort of what? A tan and a light brown color. They were not colored. The pieces, though, were red or dark burnt red for British, um, a light blue for the Prussians, and uh, the French were in red. And there was uh, oh, a pamphlet, really, for the rules. It was a very, very simple game, but uh, a very good one. And uh, later on, I'll show you a setup here. They did an expansion kit for it. I don't know what year that came out, but uh, they made it to brigade level, and um, I actually didn't care for that game that much. I thought the uh, division level was just fine. That's the setup there. And there we go with another view of the French in blue, British in red, and the Prussians would come in on the side here. And later on, they uh, introduced it as a flat tray edition, where you could buy it. And uh, this is a picture of part of the map. Uh, I was corresponding with uh, Kim uh, Meentz. I hope I got your name right there, Kim, um, who gave me some notes on this. And um, he believes, and I think he's correct, the flat tray edition never did have a color map. I think somebody has colored this in. Done a nice job, by the way. But the flat tray edition did not have a color map. And here's another view of the counters with the expansion kit. Now, we come along to what, the year 1979, I think it is? Yeah, 79. They released this edition here. It also had a master index for S&T Magazine. And then the game finally had a color map, which is really nice. Now this is just a, that's a, um, a cyberboard copy of what the map kind of looked like. Uh, light yellow, the French units were now white with a blue stripe, British red with a white stripe, and the Prussians, I think they were gray, I think, don't remember. And these uh, counters were really modeled after another SPI game, um, Napoleon and Wellington, that big massive Battle of Waterloo game. And this was a nice addition. But they did something with this addition that... Uh, in theory, almost broke the game. I'll show you what I mean. Let's go back to the original map here. Yeah, there's what the original map was like. But to fit the magazine or the map into uh, make a smaller footprint, they cut off several hexes to the uh, west, several hexes to the north, and several hexes to the east. But the most critical mistake, in my opinion, was cutting off those um, well, actually, this this picture is upside down. Uh, cutting off these hexes to the uh, east, where the Prussians come in. Now, the map was smaller. I guess here's a better view of it there, the whole thing. Okay, yeah, so these hexes were cut off. And without knowing it, um, they almost broke the game. Because I remember when we got this edition of the game, some astute player had discovered that the French could move up here, block all of the Prussian entry hexes, and the Prussians couldn't even come on. And then, of course, the uh, French victory was almost assured. So, um, that was a problem. We got around it by either house ruling it that you couldn't do that, the French couldn't go past a certain line until a certain turn, don't remember, or the British just moved units to block. I mean, once you knew that, flaw existed, um, you could fix it. But um, it does serve as a lesson that when someone's, you know, created kind of a little mini masterpiece, you shouldn't go messing with it, like cutting off hexes and stuff. This game was just a, a beautiful from square one, and I still like it, like it to this uh, day. 
Now, there were other editions. I think in 1985, Hobby Japan made an edition of it. And the current edition of the game uh, is offered by Decision Games um, in a boxed edition. I have not played nor even seen this edition, so I can't comment much on it, except they redid the counters again. Those are some typical counters. And um, personally, I, I really don't like them that much. I'm very old school. I grew up with the... Uh, games with the NATO symbols, and though while I like icons and stuff like that, they are not necessary for this game. I think the original uh, icons or counters were quite fine. Personally, I think the best edition was this one from 1979. Now, uh, we're going to take a look at the edition I have, and I don't even have an original edition. That's the sad part. The fans uh, have done their own editions, because the files are out there. If you go look for them on uh, the web, you'll find the files for this game. You can print out your own map, do your own counters, and people have customized their own version of the game. I really like this one. This fellow here has gone and uh, he's created a wooden board with little wee wooden counters, and uh, he's just done a magnificent job of the thing. Really nice. But like I said, if you get your hands on the 1979 edition, this one, it's uh, quite nice looking with these counters here. So I'll show you what I did with uh, my game. Now here's another one that somebody uh, made, handmade uh, counters. They look rather thick. I think it's that styrofoam kind of um, cardboard. Uh, I, I don't really care for it that much. And I'll show you in the game other things that evolved uh, from the 1971 edition. So we'll go to my edition of the game now and uh, I can illustrate it a little bit better with a larger board. Okay, this is a copy of the game, not an original. Um, and I printed this out of my home printer. So this is really four 8 by 10 sheets. Four sheets. Uh, I made my counters from... I took the Napoleon 20 counters from the Victory Games series which I thought were just excellent, and adapted them and reworked them with Paint Shop Pro and uh, Mac, Mac Paint and stuff like that, and made my own counters. And I made the Prussians, of course, too. Printed out the combat results table. The, uh, the rules are online. No problem there. And you can, you can actually make your own game of Napoleon at Waterloo. So that's what I did. But I'll zoom in uh, closer and show you some of the anomalies or little changes that were made over the years. Some of them quite critical. Okay, we're looking at a close-up now of the Hugomol farm here. And uh, elements of the First and Second Corps, French, attacking the Hugomol. And you can see a little wee red icon here where a British unit sets up. Now, if I've got my facts correct, the absolute first edition of the game had no unit in this spot and there was no road going into the woods and I guess in playtesting they early found out that the French could more or less just overrun this position and there was no game so in a second edition that was put out almost right away they put a 1-5 unit in this space and they added a road to go into Hougamol because the rules uh, state that you can't go into a woods hex unless you have a road so they added this road so uh, in that edition they added a 1-4 unit here which kind of acts like a speed bump now that's the setup so the setup will be these French units already in locked zones of control with this 1-4 unit uh, and I believe they messed around with the doubling and the tripling. I think originally yeah, you were doubled in a woods and they tripled it. And I think now you're what? Are you doubled in it? Woods. Defenders doubled. Yeah. But at one point you were tripled. Makes no difference. This 1-4 unit is usually uh, destroyed on turn 1. But uh, that's okay. That was a, a major change from the first edition to the second. All editions now have this 1-4 unit. Uh, included. Let's take a look at the area where the Prussians come in and this is where it gets very critical. Okay, 
because they cut off those four hexes to the right here on the east side of the board, there's very few places where the Prussians come in because you cannot come in on a forest. So putting a French unit there will block the Prussians from coming in. We'll just go further south and you can see there's three hexes here where the Prussians can, can come in. And yet, there's some French units not very far from it. So you could whip this guy up, throw his zones of control across here, and you'd lock or buy precious time and block the Prussians. Now, of course, there are some critical hexes here in the French rear, too. So the rules say they can come anywhere in on the east side of the board. So if the French doesn't block those, they could really, literally come in the French rear. Way down here, they could actually come in here, too. I've never seen a game where they come in that way, though. But um, the setup is, uh, in my edition of the game here, I put the setup hexes on the back. You can set this game up in uh, less than five minutes, which is what I love about it. Uh, I don't need to tell you about the rules. Uh, other people have done some great videos on Board Game Geek. If you really want to know the history of the game, um, one fellow has done a very comprehensive history of all the different versions. You might want to catch his his uh, video. This one is just a brief introduction. I thought, well, I've got to do a video on this game. It's just such a classic. And I almost feel guilty for having a, a copy of this game. Although I've got to admit, I do love these counters. Um, I really should get myself a copy of the uh, 1979 edition. Not much to say... Uh, about balance? I don't remember. I seem to remember it being pretty balanced. The depressions are in black in this game. Um, nothing much else to tell you. Except, oh, when I made these counters, there was no artillery counter that I could find in the Napoleon 20 series, so I had to make my own little Napoleon uh, or artillery counter. So, I think these counters are uh, really nice. And if my printer was working better, these uh, purple-looking French probably would look a lot more red than they're supposed to. Same with the British. So that's all I have to say about Napoleon at Waterloo. A very fine game. Almost the perfect uh, introductory game if you want to get some new people into the hobby. It's got the basic hex grid principles we all know. A very basic uh, combat results table. You can learn the game in less than 10 minutes. You can teach it probably in 5. And... Uh, I highly recommend it, and uh, I just made my own copy just, what, a week ago, and uh, now I'm really in the mood to play it again, so that's why I'm doing the video. But uh, that's it for Napoleon Waterloo, and uh, thank you for watching.